Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's 38 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be focusing on decimals. So we're going to look at ordering decimals, adding decimals, subtracting decimals, multiplying decimals, division involving decimals and so on. So we're going to be looking at everything involving decimals today. Um, I hope you find this video useful. As I go through the video, I'm going to give you some questions to try yourself. So remember to press pause and to try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to do a recap of decimals. So we're going to look at how to order decimals. We're going to then look at our arithmetic with decimals and so on. So feel free to press pause now and to arrange these decimal numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so if we wanted to put these in order, well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One way is to look at them and say, well, let's look at the ones of the units column, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Well, that's not going to help us find the smallest one. Okay, next, now let's look at our tenths column. So we've got a 1, a 4, a 1, a 0, and a 3. Well, 0, that's going to now be the smallest. So our smallest number is 0 0.086. That's our smallest number. So we've done that one. Now let's look at our tenths again. We've got 1, 4, 1, and three. So these two then will be between these two in terms of our next smallest. So this one or this one. So let's look at our hundredths column. We've got four hundredths and six hundredths. Well, four hundredths is smaller, so it's going to be 0 0.14 and then 0 0.165. So we've done those ones. Now let's look at our tenths column again. We've got a four and a three. Well, that's going to be smaller. So that's our next number, 0 0.35. And then our biggest number is going to be 0 0.4 because it's got a four in the tenths column. So we've put the numbers in order, starting with the smallest and going to the largest. And that was one way you could do that question. Another way you could do that question is actually to make the numbers the same length, so given the same number of decimal places. So here, the longest one has got three decimal places, so this one's got two, so put a zero on the end of that one, two zeros on the end of that one, and one zero on the end of that one. Now they've all got three decimal places, and now you can compare them really quickly and easily and see straight away that's the smallest, 0 0.086. The next smallest would then be that one. The next smallest then would be that one. The next smallest then would be that one, and the biggest number would be that one. So making them all the same length can be quite useful whenever you're ordering decimals as well. And either approach is fine, as long as you can put them in order from smallest to largest. That's all that matters. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, next question. Can you arrange an order from smallest to largest? 8.056, 8.4, 8.56 and 8.456. So feel free to press pause now and arrange these numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them the same length to begin with, and then I'll do that approach first this time. So as you can see, the longest number has got three decimal places. So let's put two zeros on the end of that one and one zero on the end of that one. Now they're all the same length. In terms of the smallest, we can see this is the smallest number, 8.056. Our next smallest would then be this number here, 8.400, or just 8.4. I'm going to take the zeros off at this point whenever I'm writing it out. Okay, so I've done that one. Now in terms of these two, I can see this one's now the next smallest, 8.456. And then the biggest number then would be this one, 8.56. And I'm going to take off that extra zero. And that's it. So I've put them in order from smallest to largest. Alternatively, you could you looked at the ones columns, which were 8, 8, 8, 8. Well, that's not going to help us. The temps column. So we've got 0, 4, 5, and 4. So this is the smallest one. Now looking at the temps again, it's between this one and this one. And now, so if we look at the hundredths, 0, hundredths, and 5 hundredths, so then that's the next smallest, and then that's the next one, and then the biggest number with them would be that one. And if you got that, well done. So we've looked at how to order decimals, and that's quite important in your GCSE maths exam because you may have a question involving ordering decimals. Now we're going to have a look at our arithmetic with decimals. So we've got some questions involving adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimal numbers. Now this should hopefully be recapped for you. You should have looked at these perhaps in your key stage three maths, and you've probably been using these skills throughout your GCSE maths already, perhaps whenever you're dealing with money questions or division and things like that. Um, but feel free to press pause and to work out these questions. Then I'll go through them, and then after you do those ones, then I've got these four for you as well. So I've got loads of questions for you to practice today. So try these ones to begin with, and then after these ones, we'll go through another four. Okay, so in terms of our first question, we've got 6.1 subtract 1.79. So lining them up like so, line up the decimal points, we've then got, and I'm going to put a zero in here as a placeholder, just so I can then see if with my subtraction, it just makes it a bit easier. Zero take away nine, well, let's borrow, so it's now a zero and a ten. Ten take away nine is equal to one. Zero take away seven, we're going to have to borrow again, so that's now ten take away seven, which is three. And five take away one is equal to four. So that's equal to 4.31. And if you got that, well done. 
Okay, next we're going to multiply 0 0.7 by 0 0.3. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. One approach is to times this number by 10 and get 7, and times this number by 10 and get 3, and then do 7 times 3, and 7 times 3 is equal to 21. But we've multiplied this number by 10 and we've multiplied that one number by 10, so we've made our answer 100 times bigger, so now we need to divide by 100. So dividing this by 10 would be 2.1, and dividing by 10 again would be 0.21. So the answer would be 0.21. So what we've done there was we said, well, instead of doing 0.7 times 0.3, we could do 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21, but we've made this number 10 times bigger, and we've made this number 10 times bigger, so we've made our answer 100 times bigger. So we took our answer and divided it by 10 and divided it by 10 again, and we got 0.21. So that's one approach to that question. Another way we could do this is to look at the two numbers, and we're doing 0.7 times 0.3. So 0.7, that's got one digit after the decimal point, and 0.3 has got one digit after the decimal point, so our answer is going to have two digits after the decimal point. So 7 times 3 is equal to 21. So if we want to write that as two digits after the decimal point, it would be 0.21, because uh, that's got two digits after the decimal point. So the answer would be 0.21. And either one of those two approaches would be fine, as long as you're confident with whichever approach you're using. That's great. Okay, next we're going to work out 11.7 divided by 3. So we're going to do 11.7 divided by 3, and we're just going to use our brush delta method there. How many 3s go into 1? 0, remainder 1. How many 3s go into 11? That's going to be 3. 3 times 3 is equal to 9, so it's 3, remainder 2. And how many 3s go into 27? That's going to be 9. So the answer would be 3.9. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Our last question says, work out 16.7 divided by 0.2. Now we're dividing by a decimal number here. And whenever you're dividing by a decimal number, it's a wee bit trickier. So what I'm going to do is, instead of dividing by a decimal, I'm going to multiply both of these numbers by 10. And that will give us 167 divided by 2. Now whenever we work this out, it'll actually be the same answer. And let me show you why. For instance, if we had something such as 8 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4, obviously. Now if I multiply both of these numbers by 10 and I get 80 divided by 20, well, how many 20s go into 80? That's equal to 4. If I multiply both of these numbers by 100 and have 800 divided by 200, that's equal to 4 because 4 200s is 800 and so on. So if I multiply both of these numbers by 10 and get 167 divided by 2, it's going to be the same answer. Now half of 167, well half of 160 is 80 and half of 7 is 3.5, so it's going to be 83.5. So the answer would be 83. And that's it. And if you've got those four answers, well done. Okay, just to make sure you're really confident with it, I've got another four questions now for you to try. So feel free to press pause and work these ones out. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. 6.5 plus 1.87. So 6.5 plus 1.87, just lining them up. So I'm going to put a zero in there as a placeholder. Zero plus seven is equal to seven. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13, so put our 3 down, carry our 1, and 6 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 8, so that would be equal to 8.37, and if you got that, well done. Okay, next, 0 0.06 multiplied by 0 0.4. I'll use this, the counting the digits after the decimal point approach first, and then I'll show you the other approach. So in terms of this question, we've got two digits after the decimal point there, and another digit after the decimal point there. So altogether in the question is three digits after the decimal points. So in our answer, there has to be three digits after the decimal point. Six times four is equal to 24. So the answer would be 0 0.024, so that it's got three digits after the decimal point. So 0 0.06 multiplied by 0 0.4 would be 0 0.024. Four. And if you got that, well done. Now, another approach would have been, well, if we take this number and multiply by 100, we get 6. And if we multiply this number by 10, we get 4. And 6 times 4 is equal to 24. Now, we multiply this number by 100 and this number by 10. So, altogether, we multiply by 1,000. So, we need to divide our answer by 1,000. Dividing by 10 would be 2.4. Dividing by 10 again would be 0.24, and dividing by 10 again would be 0.024. So as long as you got that answer, you know how you've done it, that's fine. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. 27.45 divided by 5, and I'm using the bus shelter method here. How many 5s go into 2? 0, remainder 2. How many 5s go into 27? That's going to be 5, remainder 2. How many 5s go into 24? That's going to be 4, remainder 4. And how many 5s go into 45? That's 9. So the answer would be 5.49. And if you got that, well done. Okay, and finally, we're asked to work out 1.78 divided by 0 0.4. I don't like dividing by 0 0.4, so I'm going to multiply both of these numbers by 10. So that would be 17.8 divided by 4. That just makes it a wee bit easier. And remember that because we're multiplying both the number we're dividing and the number we're dividing by both by 10, we get the same answer. So if we do one, so if we do 17.8 divided by 4, let's see what we get. So how many 4s go into 1? 0 remainder 1. How many 4s go into 17? That's going to be 4. That's 16. Remainder 1. I'm going to put the number 0 there. How many 4s go into 18? That's going to be 4. Remainder 2. And how many 4s go into 20? That's going to be 5. So the answer would be 4.45. So the answer is 4.45. And if you got that, well done. 
And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at order in decimals, we've looked at arithmetic involved in decimals, and so on. I'd highly recommend having a look at the practice questions today because the practice questions are going to be quite important because those questions, particularly the ones that are non-calculator questions, the ones that might turn up on the non-calculator paper, the ones with particularly over arithmetic with decimals, it's important that you're confident with those, that you're confident adding decimals, subtracting decimals, multiplying decimals, division involved in decimals, and so on. So that's it. So I really hope you found this video useful. There's 38 days to go to your GCC Maths exam, so tomorrow will be 37 days. Remember, our next video will be out at 3 o'clock for on YouTube. So cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.